Hello. And uh, the, uh, this week's episode of Stasis Pod has been preempted. We are going off the grid for Superhuman Samurai Cyber Pod. I'm Rob. I'm Jen, and I'm totally eating cookies. I'm David, and I have Pocky. I uh, I have some tea. That's probably is it is it like green tea? Ah, uh, no, it's a uh, cinnamon rooibos. Ooh, is it what? <laughs> I, I have a is tea. Is it real matcha or is it that powdered stuff? What? <laughs> just 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 something from work. <laughs> now I have one of those tea advent calendars where you get a different tea every day. Oh, Ooh. that's a neat. Oh, I gotta look for that. Oh, I a- saw something like that when I was out on Black Friday, uh, except it was <laughs> it was Game of Thrones socks. Oh, oh I saw the that yeah, was a different pair of socks. Ooh, and that's a lot of socks. It was actually a twelve day. So oh, okay. Oh, just well. I was thinking maybe they or maybe it's twenty four days. You just get one sock a day. Oh yeah, so they're pairs. That, that there you out. go. That works too. Yeah. Anyway, this is our sort of holiday episode. Yay. That's um, right. Mela Kaliki Maka, everybody. And a bell Yay. just broke. What the fuck? <laughs> well, I guess I need new doorbells now. Oh, it's going to be a real hard candy <laughs> Ooh, Christmas wait, for David can... here. I've, I've got it. Wait. This, uh, Yay, bell. this bell is something that is referred to as a bear bell. Oh, and it yeah. actually works. That, I've, work. I've discovered personally, firsthand, that it works very well. Well, that's uh, good. Basically, I should probably get one. Although it's a large a red jingle one. bell uh, with a Velcro strap on it that you put on yourself in some fashion when you're hiking in an area that has bears, uh, so that the bears are made aware of your presence and you know run off. So. Well, Happy um, bear season, everybody! <laughs> well, I could use probably two of them because I like to have a bell on the back door. Well, which is sort of my front door. In case people come in, also to alert the cats when I'm home. <laughs> I don't need to alert the cats when I'm home. He knows. He's ready. He's probably been waiting in the rain for two hours. So anyway, this is uh, this is the podcast where we go episode by episode through this year's uh, anime surprise smash, Gridman. Surprise, confusing, out of left field to hit. Like, I mean, it's. I mean, I expected I, it to be good because I would have watched it anyway. But it's. Uh. I expect anything coming out of Studio Trigger at this point to be pretty good. I mean, that's. A name yeah. that I can drop to your average, like, reasonably, reasonably competent geek, and, and they're gonna know what you're talking about. Well, yeah, thanks to Little Witch Academy on Netflix and Kill a Kill was impressive, if perverted. Look, all I'm saying is I was, <laughs> I was running the drive through at night at Starbucks in the tiny little backwoods nowhere I I live in, and some guy was talking about going to Akihabara, and I brought up this podcast, and every part of it, I was like, and you know, there's like, have you heard about the whole, like, weird, tr- the whole, like, Transformers connection? And he's like, uh-huh. <laughs> <And so that's, laughs> oh my god. That's okay. the level we're at, so. so. It is spread out. And uh, this episode will be dropping as the Last episode of the series comes out. Oh. Hopefully, if ducks get in a row when this comes out on time. So, and we have no idea what's going on because we're only on episode two. Well, my co-hosts are only on episode two. Yeah, I I'm very, very tempted to, up with this to keep going. Uh, also recorded in the past. For two reasons. Uh, one mm-hmm. being what I now, I mean, this is not a... A new phenomenon, but it's what I like to call the the Infinity War effect, uh, being <laughs> that you have to go see stuff like that immediately, or it's going to be spoiled all over the place. And if you if you like put off seeing it for a week, it's too late. Everything that happens is already just in pop culture. They're they're yeah, spoiling I, I it don't... on the, on the Late Show and and so yeah. <laughs> 
So there's yeah, that well, well, that I know if I don't catch up with it, I'm going to get, like, spoiled for some kind of really crazy, messed up twist that, that happens. And then that's... I mean, that's yeah, I, I imagine, like, the last few episodes will be extra weird. And, and Hopefully we can at least sequester Rob since he doesn't go anywhere near anime Twitter. That's true. From anything extra crazy. I, I mean, I unless, like, the last you. episode turns into an episode of Transformers literally, I, think, I don't think we can keep that away. Yeah, I mean, this is, um, <laughs> imagine that Drake meme, but the top one is anime Twitter, and the, down at the bottom, the happy Drake is hockey Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well I'm, st- I'm in anime Twitter and tokusatsu Twitter, so I'm getting it from all sides. I mean, David and, mostly well, also is- also the lesbians. My anime Twitter is basically David and uh, a, a longtime friend acquaintance person I know, Hydra, who is you know in Japan and well, occasionally also. Yeah, he's in he's in Japan. Us. He's I oh I saw a picture of him standing next to Red Man. It was like wow, okay. He I is, wish I could stand next to Red. Red Man was so tiny. <laughs> he is absolutely on a Red Man kick lately. I can tell you that much. Wait, the. Uh... You mean the part? No, the- not the guy that hangs out with Method Man. Oh, okay, because I was going to be jealous. <laughs> there, there is a. It was a short, like five minute episodes of this. I think Red Man was like an original, almost idea name for Ultraman, but, but this came later. Like they would take old suits out of storage and have this Ultraman looking red guy named Red Man stab these kaiju with innocent kaiju with swords while well, they come off as innocent because he just wandered around, finds a monster, and murders the hell out of it. And that's the episode. There's like no other so story. So he's like, he's like the Witcher. What you're saying is this is the Witcher. Yes. He, he's just this. Just a monster hunter. Mindless killing machine. So presumably. That goes after kaiju who are trying to live their lives. Presumably without the lounging in tubs. And and the Christopher Lambert hair. No. Oh, although I can at least tie it back to Transformers before we get into the episode. Um, there's an entire comic that's been produced recently drawn by Matt Frank, oh. who drew some Transformers issues for, I think, the club? Yes. Yes, he did. Kind of club. Possibly even yeah. some Shattered Glass. Oh, he drew a couple of real good IDW ones. Oh, he did draw IDW too. Okay. I wasn't sure. Anyway, so this is the second he spotlight. Ep- he did spotlight trail breaker or trail cutter, if that's what it was at the oh, time. But uh, wait, he's the reason yeah. for the face. Yes, I that was his that. face. Okay, the force field face. I mean, presumably the force field face was scripted, but yes, the force yeah, field but- face is absolutely his. So anyway, we are looking at the second episode, Restoration, uh, previously on Gridman. Uh, we met our cast. We got, uh, got Utah, who is our horn-headed hero. Utah. <laughs> is that not how you... Boy, it, it, maybe it's the Kenyan accent, Utah. Okay. It's just, going to Utah is kind of adorable. <laughs> it is, uh. is it as ador- adorable as Ome- <laughs> Omega Supreme? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah, I still haven't gotten over how uh, British people pronounce zebra. I still can't, 20 years after zebra. being, 20 years after meeting him, having spoken to him, extensively in the meantime, I still can't deal with Simon Furman's Decepticons. <laughs> he should know better. <laughs> Except, know. you know, it's it's an accent thing, so it's not a, a matter yeah. of right or wrong. I just feel like he should know better. So anyway, he, he is our hero. He has a strange connection with the uh, mysterious hero Gridman. And he's uh, he's got uh, two friends. He's got Sho, who is his best pal. And is super into this whole thing. And you got Rika, who kind of just wants to be left alone. 
Yeah, I feel like Rinka needs to have friends in quotes. Well, she has two normal friends, Hass and, um, what the crap? Uh, Namiko? Namiko something. Namiko? I forget her name. Wait, let me consult my notes. Uh, I made, I made my Transformers to Japanese notes somewhere. Namiko, yes. Okay. So anyway, they, uh, in the previous episode, due to apparently, uh, uh, you know, a, you know, he can, he, he, he's the only one who was able to see weird, ghostly, giant monsters over the city. And in the previous episode, a not so ghostly, uh, monster controlled by a digital entity and their real world, uh, helper destroyed their entire school and apparently the entire volleyball team. Yes. And other people saw the kaiju? Yes. Like there was mass destruction. Like it was the end of Ghostbusters. I kind of feel yeah. like it should be reversed. I kind of feel like the digital entity is her helper. Well, yes. I'm, I'm not oh. quite sure who's calling the shots here. The character dynamic is, for this podcast, as yet undefined. Okay. Okay, that's fair. But everyone Anyways. else is living in the future. Yes. The far-flung <laughs> world of 2019. No fair. I want to be a 2019. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so they have now arrived back at school, and it's totally fine. Uh, but something's weird. The whole volleyball team... They're gone, as if they never existed. Including the uh, girls Tonka and Tycho. Yep. I didn't catch the Um, other names. Uh, Yes. What what else you got there? Mattel? Uh, Shit, I had it open somewhere. Where was that tab? Is there Amigo in there? It should be Amigo. Uh, crap. Oh, there it is. Um... First, we have Tonkawa Saikiru. Tonkawa and that was, and that was the Saikil girl. Was Saikiru. Yes, that's the main girl, Tonkawa Saikiru. Uh, another one of the girls is Toiko. It's spelled, well, in Japanese, regular, but it's a company, Toiko. Uh, okay. I- oh, so it's not Taiko? Well, no, it's not Taiko. It's Toiko. Because Taiko could be is Taiko. also a thing. Taiko RC. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's so many references. Hard to do. we have Kenna Chan, Kenner, um, <laughs> um, Doi Hako, which is sort of toy. Hako is a kind of box, so toy box. Okay. And uh, Takara Nana. Gee, guess what that one is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so she died. All the... She died when she merged with Tomi. Yes. So all the dead. To- uh, volleyball girls names are based upon toy companies that have put out Transformers toys that are not Hasbro. Uh, I was going to say, and are no, well, I guess Mattel is around. Or no, Mattel was, Kenner was one of them. And no, Kenner, Kenner is it's, no longer it's Tonka, around. Toyko, okay. Kenner, Toybox, and Taco. See, that's why I thought it was Tyco was because yeah. I know Tyco is no longer around. Right. Toyko. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're just gone. Yes, and no one remembers them. Yeah, they're like we never had a volleyball team. Yeah. Hmm. Who plays volleyball? What's volleyball? <laughs> it's not quite that bad. No. Oh, but... um. Do we want to talk about the opening now that we have one? Okay. Yeah. There. I mean, I don't. I'm not well versed in anime openings, so I will leave uh, this to I... you. I would like the uh, the Sailor Moon mashup looking Matrix notebook. <laughs> yes, that that is neat. That pops up a few. There's anime usually ha- it's thematic. It doesn't normally have actual literal scenes from the show. It just has theme- thematic scenes and characters that show up in odd situations. It's all dramatic and over the top. And the entire <laughs> purpose of the opening is to sell the. Song on the single of the opening theme song. So it occurred Most to me time. this time, and mm-hmm. I mean, I I think there are some fairly obvious reasons for this, uh, but I hadn't really thought anything about it earlier. The three main characters all have blue eyes. Yeah, you noticed that too. I did when rewatching yeah. this. Like, it's not just them. Like um, Namiko and Hass also have blue eyes. Hass I seems think- like kind of greenish, a little greenish. 
<clears throat> yeah, th- th- they're slightly off, but everybody that I noticed, except for Akane, has blue eyes. You mean all the auto, uh, all the good guys? I'm not say auto. All the good guys, yes. Shattered glass. Yeah. And stuff. Yes, all the. <laughs> Although, of course, in this case, the good guys are the Decepticons. Yes, all the good guys yeah, well, have blue eyes because that's how Transformers works. Transformers works, which it's it's like another layer of thing that I didn't notice until rewatching. So it, well, meta. The show does have a lot of close-ups of eyes that c- becomes more of a theme l- in later episodes. Mm-hmm. But it's a thing. And, and there, there's also sh- frames and shots of various things. Like, there's a shot of all the class, minus the girls that have just died. <gasps> and in the foreground, two guys, well, presumably all of them are Transformers references. But two of the most interesting ones are two guys sitting in the front in uh, green and yellow. Who are Shattered Glass Straxus and Stra- Shattered Glass Octopunch with the little duckies on his hoodie. I love that hoodie with, and with the little, like, little tentacles. <laughs> yeah, they're the little tentacles from the BotCon toy that as soon as every people first saw it, it's like, they're supposed to look like tentacles, but they end up looking like the outline of rubber duckies. So this is one of those things <laughs> like the mango cannon. It was not really intended yes. that way, but turned out actually for those not familiar uh, shattered glass thundercrackers. Well, bio card said something about him having mango cannons. It was supposed to be mm. like magna cannons, but it was <laughs> amazingly appropriate. <Yeah. laughs> He's a smirker, okay. mango. <laughs> and there's a shot of the volleyball girls, and then the frame cracks. Ooh. Which is, uh, very, very David Lynch. Scene. Yes. Yeah, um, there's gonna be a really arty episode later that you don't you're say. gonna be screaming David Lynch at the screen. Is it going Excellent. to be entirely animated from photographs of the storyboards? <laughs> Ooh, there is use of photographs, Ooh. but not quite like that. My, my log has something to tell you, and it's excited about that episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are shots of spoiler upgrades that show up later, which look really dynamic and cool, but they're spoilery, but it really doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. And an Amish shot of um a girl with green hair. Oh. Looking really menacing. That'll come up later. You'll find out. <laughs> Jan will find out if she starts going through the episodes before you do. Uh. Anyway, it, it's it's nice. I I I do. The theme song is growing on me. I still prefer the Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad song because that's awesome. <laughs> I well, really I like the got one Gary that's, Owens narration. I like the one that yeah. someone did of uh, the mashup. Someone did of that. Yes. Yes. Um. Oh. Um. I mean, there's there's one where they've overlaid the old one, and there was one where they've got a pretty credible Gary Owens impersonator. Yeah, we talked about that last time. Um, it was done yes. by I don't. I don't know who did the vo- Gary Owens voice, but the guy who put it together was Mock Dent, who's sort of a Tokusatsu Twitter guy. Okay. Who, uh, um, um, if you're listening, I like you on the show. Hey. <laughs> more guests, more guest That's stars. Right. Yes, yes, we we will have more guests at some point. We're we're just yeah, the, the couch is open. It's a ways off. Yeah. So yeah, they. Uh... Nobody, the, our main three characters remember everybody, and meanwhile, everybody else thinks that, uh, they've just developed imaginary friends. Yeah, we, we don't have a volleyball team. Yeah. <laughs> and they yeah, even oh, say yeah, when um, the teacher comes in, hey, uh, you know, she, she's got imaginary friends, and he's all, uh, well, that's good to know, I guess. Cause this guy, DG, DGAF. Yeah, um, the girl no, he's saying- No, not interested. The girl saying that Akane has imaginary friends being a annoying dickish tease is the Starscream girl. Right. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> yes. And also, I don't know if this is like a Japanese, like an anime trope of some sort, but I thought this guy was going to be Probably. creepier because he's got the Elijah Wood Sin City glasses. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, um, the Gendo glasses? The sin- th- that could go... Any number of ways. Either they're just smarter than everybody else, they're creepy, they're a supervillain, they're just mysterious and barely have a personality. In this case, it's just, he's an odd teacher. He He is totally apathetic. Yeah. 
Anyway, it's uh, it's time for uh, it's lunch time, so uh, uh, Utah is having uh, lunch with uh, Creepy Girl. Well, she like was like, "Hey, where do you have lunch?" And then she was like, "I'm gonna stalk you and follow you there." Yes, basically. Yeah, and we get shots of other kids getting food, and we see there's entire more of those well, weird ass hot dogs. Yes, the special yes. dogs, as if whatever happened last episode has altered the world. That now. Like, last episode was in Pride that Akane brought them from home. So now they're the not-so-special dogs. They're actually sold at the school in bulk. Because, like, Japanese schools have, like, little delis, I guess, that sell buns and sandwiches and things. I never quite understood that, but then school food has always been a weird thing, even in America to me. I would bring my food from home most of the time. I don't trust school food. Crappy little. Well, that was probably pizzas. better than it used to be, but anyway. And I believe she also uses the word "yo" here, which felt weird. <laughs> well, we're we're listening to the dub, so I, it, I yeah, still. Are... I uh, am still on the sub. I don't know that this Japanese girl should have the same vocabulary as Sylvester Stallone. I mean, maybe that's maybe it's an intentional like that it's... means something about her character. Well, that, that's that, well. Now we're having an argumentation argument about translation it's like when translating you should make things easily understandable to the viewing audience that won't get all the japanese references and you don't need to throw in honorifics and everything although admittedly it is happening in a japanese high school but eh, yeah. it, uh, make shit understandable and not too cryptic yeah neo philadelphia is about to explode <laughs> uh oh wait what the hell is the name of the town I think we get it, but I, don't I just it assumed this was Tokyo. I assume everything no, is Tokyo. I'm, I'm yeah, a bad much. white person. It's probably yeah. near Tokyo. That's usually where everything happens. Near Tokyo. <laughs> Unless otherwise specified. And my phone's bleeping. So anyway, we uh, we follow her, and uh turns out she is a major uh tokusatsu fan, because she's got a whole big display case full of... <laughs> Full of rubber monsters. Also garbage. Oh, you skipped a spot that's very important. Okay, please edify me. After she's done talking with Yuta about whatever the fuck, like, he... <clears throat> well, he didn't want to tell her she's that he saw a kaiju because it, it's weird that he told anybody else and they didn't believe him. But she'd overheard him talking about that in Gridman and wanted to go to the roof with him. And she was hanging out with her friends, Thundercracker and Astro Train. Anyway, after she comes down off the roof, she bumps into, a teacher bumps into her, the oh, right. creepy teacher holding his phone, and he doesn't mm. apologize to her, and we see on the ground little red droplets, which yes, ends it, up it's... being, I guess she was drinking tomato juice or something. Right, I figured it was something like but that. But it's symbolic of blood. Yes. Ah. It looks like, it looks almost like he just stabbed her, the front yeah. to her. And then he, he ignores her and walks away on his phone. And then we get a close-up of her eyes at an extreme angle. Uh, she's got the crazy eyes. She's, she's angry. squeezing the juice and more blood is going on the floor. Yeah. It's me every her day juice. at work. Yes. Then she goes home to her kind of nice looking, pretty big house for Japan. Mm-hmm. Full of garbage. And in her house is garbage. Oh, so much garbage. Yeah, what is with all those so bags? Is she just like a hoarder or what? I um, mean, I guess well, this is probably of, something. Yeah, it's it's a shorthand for being an otaku, uh, uh, hikinomori, like just okay. leaving garbage bags full of whatever the fuck in your place and not cleaning up. Although the question is, what the fuck actually is in those garbage bags? Mm. Um, uh, I mean, I've seen the odd episode of Hoarder, so probably a bunch of cat skeletons. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I almost get the feeling some weird, creepy shit like that's going on, but I don't know yet in my watching. Um, but she also has glass, giant glass cases, floor to ceiling, almost full of kaiju toys that, no, I cannot name what they all are. We would be here for two hours. <laughs> but you could. You just won't. I could probably name a lot of them. I'd have to look at pictures of them. I, I don't have instant recall of every kaiju from an Ultimate Series. I don't believe you. <laughs> no, I, I, in other episodes, I've had to look up things, and, and I'm not going to name all the ones that I do. But yeah, so many of them, oh, it's like lots of Red Kings and things. 
And, um, well, actually, th- there's a close up, I forget if it's now or later in the episode, where we see two shelves that are mostly filled with kaiju from Ultraman Powered and Ultraman Towards the Future, the American made and the Australian made Ultraman shows. I have no idea what that means, but it's a thing mm-hmm. I noticed. <clears throat> Interesting. <clears throat> anyway, my throat's killing me. Yeah, so she, it turns out she is the Malcolm Frink of this show. Mm, yes. Uh, Which is a name, like, I don't remember any other character's name from the original Superhuman and Samurai Cyber Squad, but I remember Malcolm Frink because is is such a nerd name. An evil nerd name. Well, and also it's in the opening. Well, no, but I forget, like, Amp is one of the other kids? I don't know. I'll have evil to make nerd. Simple. Yeah, but Malcolm Frank, it just, ah, it's such a good name. (laughs) But I guess Akane Shinjo works too. Yeah, and she is talking to this Tim (laughs) Curry-looking cyber demon. I don't know if I'd say he looks like Tim Curry. Well, no, he doesn't look like Tim Curry. He sounds like Tim Curry. Yes. He just looks like an evil cop version of Kilo Khan and is voiced by a guy trying to sound like Tim Curry because, oh, it's such a good reference to the old show. <laughs> well, at Tim one point, Curry he also sounds great. a little David Bowie. Well, well, David Bowie's kind of sounds a little bit like Tim Curry sometimes. You know? He's he's putting out fires with gasoline, is what I'm saying. I mean, David Bowie's got a better singing voice, but, but Tim Curry's is fine, too. Anyway, so she, it turns out, is a whole thing where, like, she molds these monsters... Out of like clay and like a wire armature, and then he makes them real. Yes. Yes. For we will we we are yet to see by by what degree of real this is, but yes. Yes, I mean he's definitely playing on like her petty feuds and insecurities. Mm-hmm. Like very well. What better petty foibles and insecurities than a human teenager? Yes, exactly. As Madoka Magica taught us. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, we cut back to our heroes, and they, they've they gone back to uh, to this uh, this old tech store run by uh, run by her mom, uh, Mom Megatron. <laughs> yes. Uh, don't Mama Megatron. Anyway. But the, the shop was, was closed a- that day, and they said, oh, we're coming anyway, and, and then the mom is like, have fun, kids. The store's closed, and she just leaves. Even though her friends wanted to hang out at the mall. It, there, I mean, there's definitely a moment where it's like, no, but I have plans. And she's like, all right, fine. And Well, I mean, she doesn't say all right, fine. She just tells her friends, ah, I got stuff I gotta do. And then it's like, okay, fine, we'll do the thing. So, like I, I, cute. And then, yeah, so she's back there, and it's all, you know, I wasn't even supposed to be here today. Yes. <laughs> She's understandably embarrassed of Amnesia Boy and this weird Ultraman nerd. They're dorks. Not yes. even they're just boys. <laughs> Stupid boys. And so they have to. So anyway, they. they and uh, this whole time, this uh, weird gorillas looking murder hobo guy has been following <laughs> them. Yes. <laughs> oh. And he just and comes then, in and start. Well, he, he tries to he, come in. Because he's wearing swords on his back, and they just get stuck in the door. This so he has to go in sideways. He is he is definitely as as stupid as a Dinobot. It's good, I approve. Yeah, that um, spoilers. The um, the the movie Dinobot inspired characters in the show are kind of the comic relief. Uh-huh. I mean, they're awesome, but there's a lot of good comedy around them. Oh, as Dinobots should be, yes. most of the time. So anyway, this guy just starts coming in and messing with his computer. Yes, and they're they're wondering if he's a samurai. Which this guy's clearly not a samurai. I'm pretty sure samurai know how to go through doors. <laughs> I, okay, admittedly, he should be able to go into the doors, but he, he he's he the goemon tries, of the group. He just tries to go straight through the door and just. just, just he doesn't fit He's got like swords. Four swords on his back that take up so much room. There, I like him the so much. Door. <laughs> He's so dumb. Anyway, he he immediately optimizes their piece of junk, junk yes. the computer, 
So basically, he it, comes in. He's got to upgrade his upgrade their RAM. It's it's pretty old one, so he's gonna have to like defrag the hard drive. Uh, definitely want to dust out the fan after something that old. I mean, oh my god, if they haven't dusted it recently, there's like crazy amounts. There's gonna be like spider egg sacks, and it's yeah, or gecko I've, eggs. I <laughs> who knows what. I've been in Cicadas, computers maybe? that old, and it's. It's not great. But he manages to upgrade it really fast. Yeah. And now I that mean, he's RAM done so. RAM is not that hard to upgrade if you've got the RAM. Hmm. And now that he's done so, uh, all three of our heroes can see and hear Grid Man. And, and that's Yay. when I realized what he actually, one of the things that he obviously did was install a sound card. Because <laughs> back in, in at least the late 90s when I got my first, like, piece of junk computer... Uh, I, I did have to have, I didn't have a sound card for a while because at that point, uh, sound, the audio hardware was not yet, uh, didn't yet come on the motherboard most of the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I you did, actually I had to get a separate that. sound card to process audio because that was, that's a lot of processing. Wow. That takes a lot of processing I think power. it took like a day or two to get mine to work. So I. Putting in a CG drive was harder and easier at the same time. I'm, I'm going to say since Clearly, all he was doing was hardware-based, uh, so he didn't actually defrag the hard drive. That's a mm. software thing. What's well, Gridman's department? Uh, so I'm going to say he upgraded the RAM and added a sound card. <laughs> also, this is exactly the vintage of computer that you would have to have a separate sound card. Also a modem. Yeah. What I'm saying is 14.4 modem. <laughs> you better have a magazine if you want to... <laughs> <laughs> load any websites. So anyway, this guy knows the whole Gridman deal, and he has a mission for them. He has used forbidden ancient technology, by which I mean the phone book. <laughs> yes. To look up the missing students. Oh, the, um... Well, yeah, it um, sounds like the, it's actually like a school phone directory. said the phone directory. Yeah, what's what's his name did it? Not... not New guy didn't do it. It was, um... Fudge. I gotta check my notes. I forget, the, I forget Sideswipe's name. Oh, uh, Utsumi. Show. I'm just going to call him Sideswipe. I want a shirt. Uh, I know it's easier. <laughs> Glasses, kid. Utsumi. Yeah. So, yeah, he's used the forbidden ancient technology of a phone book to look up these missing students. And so they go, and it turns out uh, this doesn't go so well because these yeah. girls all died in middle school, and they're just hassling their families who've probably long since moved on. Yeah, these yeah, kids the first have one they basically go to is... been, like, crisis yeah. These kids have been retconned. It's like, mm. it, it's yeah. not just that they died yesterday. They died a while back. So, yeah, yeah. their parents are happy about that. So so they wander into Noodle Shop that Psych Hill's parent li- works in and, and just harassing him about her his dead daughter. It's... Ah, it's weird and sad and disheartening to the main characters. And then they do that with every other place. And and then there's a smash cut contrast, after all that, to Akane laughing about it in her horrible garbage-filled room. Yes. I I have to say, as someone who has struggled with depression, my, my apartment never got that bad. Yeah. I mean, she's definitely at least one of those Glade plugins or their Japanese equivalent. Yeah, I'm. It's a good thing she doesn't have ferrets. Is all I'm gonna say. So, uh, so yeah, we 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 cut back to our heroes. They are, um, they're having a a cool, refreshing beverage. <laughs> yes, Ramune. Ramune. <laughs> oh, this is this is like a this is like a known thing. Yeah, they yeah, actually, can, uh, I don't know if you have World Market there. If you have an Asian grocery uh, not, around you, you could probably find it. Um, my, Wegmans, my grocery store has them. They're really uh, good. They're, um, I would suggest the melon, maybe. I okay. think some of the, I know they definitely have them at World Market, uh, which I like to go to, <laughs> to, to buy cans of the official canned coffee of Nerve. Uh, cause you see, and, and there's, there's some, like, some, poorly considered licensing going on uh but yeah, they they have it there and carbonated i carbonated fruit drink thingy and i mm. think it has gotten to the point where i mean i know like the city market 
food place I used to go to in Columbus. Of course, there was like a sushi and Asian food place that had it. But I think I think most of the time, if your grocery store has gotten to where it's getting pocky in, which they are more and more, yeah. I think they're going to start. And I think Meyer had it at one point. As I'm eating. When they were like, look at us having fancy stuff. Anyway, yes, it's absolutely a thing. If not that, just find an Asian market. To okay, because... Oh, um, um, if you do get one, um, make sure you watch a video, or I would at least suggest you watch a video online of how to open the damn thing first. Yes, which is sort of... Because it's tricky. Or I might just have to ask my dad, because he's definitely told me about how, like, bottles used to have marbles in them. Ooh. Oh. I did not know I that, but no, it, it's kind of weird. your dad was that old. <laughs> plastic top, because you have to push the marble down with a piece of plastic, but you can't hold it down once it goes in, or it will fizz all over the fucking place. You just have to mm. pressure gently <laughs> and release. Yeah, you just have that to sounds pop. complicated. And yes, there's a marble floating in the top of it, and... Um, that causes samurai caliber a great deal <laughs> Yes. Consternation. He wants it. Because um I I actually did get a marble out of one once. <gasps> well I was trying to figure out how to get one out. What? And then then I sort of gave up on that, but I accidentally broke a bottle. <laughs> and oh my god, the shards were everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> like, you you know how gr- glass like normally fractures? This mm-hmm. turned into to a top and a bottom large chunk and Thousands of razor sharp fragments. Well, these are actually they're they're made of a very thick glass. Yeah, it's it's ridiculously thick and and the thing I was actually clear, but swirl. Maybe it was on uh, Atlas Obscura, uh, which is another thing I follow on Twitter. But I was reading something about these like just a couple weeks ago, but they actually were invented by like some guy from. The UK somewhere. It was like he was Irish or Scottish or English. Uh, but he was like in Japan in the late 1800s, uh, and selling them. And the name is actually, uh, just a, a, uh, distortion of lemonade. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. So, so yes, it says it was, uh, blah, 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 Wikipedia. It was introduced in Kobe by Alexander Cameron Sim. Uh, it's derived from the English word lemonade. Uh, apparently they are sometimes called cider. Also, interesting note, which I'm sure many of our non-Americans are aware of, but I only learned about the one week I went to England, is that they call, like, Sprite and stuff lemonade. Weird. Huh. That's just because I would order, like, I just, I learned that. But yes, they are introduced in, it was introduced in 1872. And that's uh, that's part of why the bottle is so thick is because it's still made with those like classical, you know, it's it's still made to be like an old fashioned bottle. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, our samurai here, um, samurai caliber, or um, movie <laughs> slug to the rest of us. He's uh-huh. so good and dumb. Really wants that marble and gets it out by slicing the bottle in half perfectly. <laughs> Which he can do, because he's, you know, got swords. He's magic. (laughs) And also, this guy, whenever he moves around, he's kind of doing that ninja run. Yes. Where he's, He's like, like, bent over at the waist. Oh, yeah, when they're following him around, he's, yeah, he leans forward, he has his hands in his suit pockets, and he's, like, running on the rooftops. I think you'll find that that's called the Naruto run. (laughs) Oh, the Naruto run. I thought it was, like, a ninja, specifically a ninja thing. Well, I mean, well, it, it is. It, it is. It, Naruto it's, is. It's ninjas. much older in anime than that. It goes all the way back to Mazinger in that pose. It's it's okay. Fine. It's visually dynamic of swinging your arms backwards as you lean forward and run faster. It looks cool. Go Nagai? Are we talking about Go Nagai now? Yeah. Well, well, at least the oldest known one I've seen uh, a GIF of is Mazinger doing that. Might be older than that, possibly, but Mazinger is pretty goddamn old. Fascinating. Anyway, this, uh, we, we learn here that, uh, she does not care for carbonated drinks. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh Rika doesn't. Right. And as such, she is later given an iced tea. Yeah, it's, yes. it's very uh, sweet. Slug gives it, or slag, whatever. Samurai yes. boy gives it to her. Uh-huh. Samurai and, and caliber. 
She's like keeping to herself because she's depressed about finding out, oh my god, her classmates are dead. I mean, yeah, the other it, two are sort at of least still in, in shock. The, uh, that it doesn't seem The real. translation in the subtitle, at least, is he asks her if she can drink this. Which just <laughs> yeah, sounds uh, very, uh, like, I don't know. It's a very adorable, like, I don't know how people work. Dinobots speak. Yeah, it's kind of like there. there's a really good issue of Astro City uh, okay. called The Nearness of You. Probably. It's about a guy it. whose wife was, like, crisis away and <gasps> never existed, so he's only got sort of vague memories of her. Yes. Oh, I think I remember hearing about that issue. And but so yeah. sort of the, well, the of vague issues. equivalent of, you know, the specter or the phantom stranger comes to him and says, you know, I, I can I can eliminate this memory if you want. And he says, no, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll keep it. Mm-hmm. But how, what, is, what does everyone else say? Nobody wants me to take away the memories. It, it's a really good issue. Yeah, oh. that was a good comic, man. Yeah. But but yeah, that's what she's worried about. Is she? It's not just yeah. that she wants to lose her. She doesn't want to lose her friends. It's that she doesn't. The idea of her friends not existing anymore is just like, and her forgetting them is just like so upsetting. Whereas well, the, the, the guys of- are just like, hey, we're some dudes. We think things are cool. Yeah, because they weren't really friends with the volleyball girls. They they were just in the same class. But she's thinking about like her friends. Starscream Chan and Soundwave Chan. Yes. <laughs> and, and we see some memories of them hanging out. And uh, also we see them at like a sports day or something where they're, they're all dressed in purple outfits. <gasps> and there's what? a team in the background all in red outfits. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. That's pretty great. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, this is after all a toku show kind of. So it is yeah. it is monster fighting time. Yay! And the latest monster has been unleashed. It is half Mecha Godzilla and half one of those weird ass barrel eye fish. <clears throat> oh yes, the well yeah. oh it's a combination of wait, where's let me get the right TM tab open. <laughs> it's time for the theme song to start Superhuman Samurai. Deva Dadadan. Sire Squad. Oh, uh Deva Dadadan. Which it's okay. This, with the monsters in the show, there seem to be references to at least three different things, possibly <laughs> you don't more. Say. The, well, the Diva Dad is—it's a basic sort of like Godzilla without or tail or with a really short tail design, bipedal okay. lizard-looking thing. But it's got yeah that creepy transparent skull fish head. Um, the, the pattern on it is sort of like cracked, like it's white with cracks on it, which is kind of a common kaiju design. It's like white stuff with lines in it. But it, its name contains Dada, which is a black and white alien kaiju thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, they have a monster named after an art movement, and it's very Dadaist. <laughs> but the, the, the coloration could be based upon I think bug bite. Oh uh, wow! I can see that. Uh, the botcon bug bite, right? Yeah. White with uh, some bits of purple and black on it. Also, its eyes are uneven, so it's kind of hilarious looking. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's adorable and silly. There's probably another kaiju reference I'm missing because there's freaking layers. Like uh, the, the most recent episode I watched. I have no fucking idea what Transformer the monsters are referenced to. <laughs> it's like black with rainbow stripes on it. It's like, the hell? Getting deep even for us. Alright, so it, it is now superhero time, and just in time, our, uh, our hero Utah gets a big ass Toku Spider-Man watch. Yay! <laughs> yes. Which he can use to enable Flash on his browser. That's right. Yes. He's got a henshin device, um, and he has to like, do a pose, like, most tokusatsu things, like Ultraman, your Power Rangers and things, Kamen Rider, you have to do a henshin pose. You do a little pose, say something, and you transform. It's tradition. So he does all things, shouts, access, flash, and, oh, um, Akane, the serial killer who's now trying to kill her homeroom teacher, she has a little drone Watching the bat, the monster battle for her. Yes. And she's cackling madly while doing it. 
She is a crazy person. Yeah. So anyway, he uh, he goes into the computer, comes out as a different grid man this time. Yeah, as he's growing bigger in the regular Ultraman pose, which is kind of the Superman flying pose, one arm up, one arm down, uh, he changes to the traditional, well, grid man color, which is also kind of Ultraman colors, usually the silver and red. Ah. And much like the, uh, much like Servo from Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Who was yes, also yes. in those colors? Well, well yes. Uh, and so now he's then it had cuts his to... RAM upgraded and upgrading he's RAM. The proper colors. Just want to talk about upgrading RAM. Oh, um, Ultraman is voiced by the same guy who, or ah, Gridman is voiced by the same guy in Japanese who voiced the original Gridman. Ah. Which means nothing to you guys, really. It was just an interesting thing. And then we cut to Ultra Nerdery. Yes. Um, A lot of the fight scenes in some of the future ones are homage a little bit too much. But this one specifically homages a fight in, uh, I think it's the first episode of, it's it's in Dan Gaio. But it's an odd reference because, like, Gridman jumps, kicks um, the monster... Then jumps up on top of a building with the sun behind him, turns around and looks all awesome. And then you see a shot over his shoulder looking at the ground. That's a, not exactly frame for frame, but it's, it's kind of a shot for shot remake of the fight in grid, in Dan Gaio, but it's, that's a bad guy in Dan Gaio doing that. Ah. Which is a little odd, but it looks awesome. And that was, I'm pretty sure, at least most of the series was animated by Masami Obari and Good lord, there are a lot of Masami Obari Mecha show references in this. Mm-hmm. This entire series, because, well, uh, Akira Memiya, the director of this, really likes Masami Obari's old Mecha stuff, and pretty much anyone who likes old Mecha stuff loves Masami Obari. He's still working, he just doesn't do as much as he used to, I think. But it, it's, if you want ridiculous dynamic Mecha fights, you get Masami Obari. Okay. And now you get Akira Memiya. Because, damn, this looks good. Yes. This does look very good. Although it's CG, which is... They have to be using some actual animation frames, but, like, that most of it is CG. It looks so damn good. It looks really nice. So, anyway, this thing has, like, a laser that shoots out of its chest, and it is nullifying uh, Gridman's powers. So he's going to need some kind of power-up, and Mm. good news... Uh, that weird murder hobo is actually a sword. Yay! Yeah, because Rika asks, like, can you stop that monster? He says, no. It's like, can you at least help? It's like, yeah, I can do that. Like, <laughs> his vocabulary understanding is like, he's too specific, but he's also a little stupid. Hey, he's, he's, like I said, he's dumb as a dinobot. Yes. So, uh, he... He goes into the piece of junk too, and then shows up in the real world as a giant. What? What a surprise! A giant sword. I mean, his name is Caliber. Yes, his, his name is Soul Samurai Caliber Ch- or something. Excalibur. Samurai Caliber. Excalibur. That's terrible. <laughs> well, it's a reference to Excalibur, of course. Cause well, that's, yes, that's I know. A thing that happens all the damn time because, well, JRPGs you can only fit so many letters in there, so you had to cut some off. Uh. <laughs> At least I think that's the origin of why some swords are just called caliber. Oh, I remember those days. Anyway, so much like that bottle with the marble in it, he gets cut in half. Mm. Uh, yes. And they sort of do the thing where he's like sliding apart, and then he explodes. Oh, which is fun, but but before that, he does, they do the thing. Oh, the, uh, what I, what I, I don't know anything about this, but it's, it's the dick sword pose. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yes, it's. Again, Masami Obari, I don't, I, it ha- cannot have originated with him, but he perfected it effectively. And if you see a sword pose in the anime, it's either Masami Obari doing it or it's specifically referencing him, like here. But like, it's a basic pose, like, it's easy to understand. Like, characters on the right hand side of the screen holding a sword, dramatically pointing it at a dynamic angle, the sword's going up to the upper left. It's simple art because 
quite often when you're drawing something, the default way, or at least in America anyway, is you have the light source in the upper left, lighting a character on the right. And having the sword reach up to that light source and gleaming, it just makes a lot of sense and looks awesome. But yeah, it, it's you're kind of holding it at crotch level, so it's a dick sword pose. <laughs> So yeah, uh, and that's the end of the monster. Yeah, that is the end of the monster. He has been defeated, and uh, we we cut back once again. Um, uh, the next day, all the damage has been reversed. Yeah, and uh, in this case, she did not succeed in killing her target. Uh, that yes, teacher is still um, alive, but he's more polite. <laughs> yes, that's the thing because. Um, Yuta is wondering if what they did actually changed anything. It changed the teacher, but they don't know that. But Akane notices that? I think? Yeah, I mean, she is in the shadows watching. So Gridman can change the world for the better? Mm -hmm. So she sees what happens, but yeah. Dun dun. And that is the end of the episode. Oh man, I I am gonna have to like I'm gonna end up getting ahead of the group. I mean, not ahead of David, probably. Yeah. Maybe you know, uh, we'll see. I'm watching it today at goddamn airs and tweeting the shit out of it. Yeah, it's a mystery. <gasps> dun dun dun! It is a mystery. Yeah, and meanwhile, I shall st I shall still avoid anime Twitter, and I will learn none of this. It'll all be a surprise. <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess the the always leaving the reference. Uh, no, the, the, the shocking reference of this week, I guess. Well, there's not really that much other than hey, that's bug bite, and um, it turns out that Thundercracker and Astro Train Girl are dating and have oh, been for over a year. That's Astro Train <laughs> Girl. Okay, I I think well she she has like a little purple bow tie, like almost everybody else has a red one. Hers is purple with little white lines on it. Like mm -hmm. the Astro Train that was the Transformers Club toy. Ah, I gotcha. And the weird thing is, like, which I didn't find out until, like, uh, like a couple of weeks. No, two, three weeks ago or so. Well, it'll be like a month by the time this comes out. Um, The director, Akira Amemia, wrote a little short story about a short-haired, blonde, dyed blonde girl with a loud jacket. Falling in love with another girl, and he posted it like over a year ago on the Inferno Cop Twitter, and that's the same character designs that are Akane's friends that are SG Thundercracker and SG Astro Train, and oh. okay, <laughs> that's <laughs> ah, this is the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> It is really adorable the the fact that it happened like eighteen months ago before the show happened. I mean, like that's... admittedly, maybe that's when they were coming up with the ideas for the show and stuff. But that he wrote a story, a cute little story about two of the minor characters who haven't I haven't even had lines yet. But yeah, that I mean, I that seems lines, like so. the sort of fun background stuff you end up coming up with in development yeah. is. You know, just like having this extra stuff and you just keep that in there for people who have seen the original, you know, but you've just, yeah, I mean, that, that sounds like the stuff that ends up in like the subfolders of your Scrivener document. Yeah. It kind of makes, it, it's just, we now have official fanfic written by the director of a show about a girl version of, of G2 Thundercracker. My favorite toy. <laughs> My favorite um, toy. My favorite it's... toy is a cute lesbian now. <laughs> With the best jacket. Ah. Uh, we need to. So you think maybe for Christmas we can get some toys of some of these kids? Um, I know I did see some merch show up on. I am at least following. Oh, yeah, they're... Like. Studio Trigger's feed at this point. Well, th th yeah, we're we're getting um, Nendoroids of Akane, Rika, and Gridman, the cute little big-headed things that are like Funko Pops, but more expensive and actually adorable without frightening eyes. 
Yeah, oh, slightly so posable. Very expensive. Um, I there, there's also is it a Figma or something of Gridman that's regular? Mm-hmm. The we're also there's also like a whole range of toys with that. I I think we were getting a revolt or a Figma of. At least one of the other girl, one of the girls, but I can't remember. I want one of them of the of the. Uh, I've just learned that these exist like a week ago. The the Nendoroid mm. dolls that are like they have slightly bigger bodies so that they can have clothes. Oh, I I think that's a new thing that they just started. It is a new thing, but it sounds like they. It looks like they they did some like you know in-house stuff first like alice in wonderland inspired stuff and and oh. but they have a couple for like maybe one of the fate show like series or something oh, but they do have yeah, some licensed those. ones slated yeah so there'll probably be more merchandise of gridman mostly girls but it'll probably just be the main two i would imagine give it to me i don't think they'll go down as far i would Love a Nendoroid little Thundercracker girl. Oh, uh, we need but it I find on the it level. Doubtful. It absolutely needs to be on the level of the Kimono Friends Nendoroids. Well, uh, actually, if they went that far, she's a possibility. She doesn't have a lot of lines, but she's shown up a bit. Like also, they've gone down to the alpaca in the yeah, Kimono I Friends the, line, which she's I like want the third alpaca. Tier. She's so cute. She would she would be the equivalent of the alpaca, I think. Or, oh, no, wait, no, we'd probably get the Dinobots first. Yeah. But they're all dudes. That's no <laughs> so fun. So she's more likely. Yeah, she might be more likely than the Dinobot dudes. I, oh, um, there is, oh, there's, there are like, um, what do you call them? Spring Up Cafe, Spring Up, they have oh, yeah, cafes. yeah, Pop Up Cafes. Yeah, Pop Up Cafes in Japan that happen for a lot of anime. Mm-hmm. And sometimes Ultraman and other things. And there's one, well, right now, I think, or maybe starting soon, for Gridman. <gasps> of course. Give me merch. So you can get, there's, well, it's not a lot of merch. You get like little keychains or little things you sit in, the food you buy there. What um, about most of the characters. that shirt? Sure, I don't know. I haven't actually seen, uh-huh. the, the only merch clothing I've seen, like, has a Gridman's face on it. I, yeah, I haven't seen any, cool. like, this looks like the outfit they're wearing in the show yet. Yet. I kind of do want Utsumi's shirt. Yes. So, yeah, it's it it continues to be crazy. Yes. Yeah, I'm I'm very intrigued as to where this is going, as I have no idea. Yeah, and we haven't even met Rodimus yet. And oh, wow. I think or the other shit's dinobots. gonna get crazy. That's I'm just gonna say I think shit's gonna get crazy. That's my theory. I think the the word mind fuck is gonna be entirely I, appropriate. That is appropriate because I just found out today that um the head writer, or maybe the only writer of this show, was a writer on four episodes of Big O. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Among various other things, but Big O in the city. Hey, Big O. <laughs> Big. We have danger. <laughs> we we have some similarities here. Ah. Uh, yeah, I am. So, I am up for this. <laughs> all right, so I think that should about do it for today. But Yay, uh, of course, Merry Christmas. Oh, that's right. Yay, bears! Please run away. <laughs> so until next time, we are all over the internet. We're on Twitter, we're on Tumblr, and we're on Facebook. And we are hosted on IaconUnderground.net, where we have a Patreon set up to help with hosting expenses. That is at patreoncom slash underground. And hopefully, sometime soon, we will have uh, some Bumblebee talk. Ooh, yes. And we may also venture into the Spider Verse. <gasps> but yeah, um, yes, too. I think Spider Verse comes out first. I believe so. Technically, well, like Bumblebee is is coming out in really limited theaters, like the eighth, mm-hmm. but nowhere conveniently near most of us. Well, yes. Fredericksburg so does happening. have the best massage chairs. Ooh. Well, it, it ain't near the, the other two of us. 
<laughs> I'd, have to, to, I'd have, to have to go to, to America. I mean, that's Fredericksburg true. is still like an hour's drive, so. Oh, yeah, that's about Syracuse. I'd have to go to Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, so that But, like, I, I've mentioned before that anything that isn't our, like, one crappy single screen theater that hasn't been renovated since Jurassic Park is <laughs> is like an hour drive. Good man. All right. Until next time, I'm Rob. I'm Jen. And I'm filled with the holiday spirit. I'm David.